what's up? Welcome to another video. Welcome to the Hyundai Ionic 5N. This is a really, really interesting car. I'm going to put you on my head as usual. We're going to do a full POV walk around on the exterior, the interior, and then a drive in this new electric but fun beast. I hope the wind sound is okay for you. I've pulled over. We're in the French countryside, just right next to the road here to be able to give you a little walk around. Just had a little break in the clouds and it stopped raining. So hopefully we'll be able to walk around right now without getting too wet, too muddy. Uh, but here it is. Basically the base that you guys know, the Hyundai Ionic, which is basically like a, weird mix between a city car and an SUV. It's like a small SUV, big city car. I don't know, it looks small in photos, but then when you have it in front of you, all of a sudden it looks massive. But this one's had the N treatment. There's been two previous models that have gotten this treatment as well. Uh, very cool, you know, iconic kind of livery now with this nice kind of uh, matte finished light blue with the orange accents all around. It looks, uh, yeah, it looks really cool, actually. They've added some aerodynamic detail, so it's like a new front end right there. Um, you've still got these kind of cool looking retro lights. It's a mix between a very futuristic look and somewhat retro as well. Anyways, I, I quite like it. I like the way it looks. These aero details around are cool looking. They help, I guess, with more sporty driving to add uh, downforce, I guess, but they also make it slightly less slippery. So the drag coefficient's not quite as good as on the uh, standard car. But you do get some cool little details like much bigger rims now. Um, so 21 inch rims with obviously uprated brakes. We're on some Pirelli tires, which are very muddy now. That is my bad. But these are specifically developed P0s for the this car. Uh, so there is somewhere. There's the H, oh, there you go. I think it's this HN Hyundai uh, N um, writing, which shows you that it's the tire that was developed specifically for this. And then apart from that, I mean, yeah, a bunch of different sporty little details like here, like there. The rear looks really cool. Again, that kind of somewhat futuristic yet retro look, which I guess, you know, each to their own, but I think it looks quite cool. Uh, new diffuser. You still get all the practicality of this platform. So you get the electric opening tailgate uh, with a really nice big boot. You can put the seats flat, the lie down seats, very easy to do. Uh, yeah, plenty of practicality, plenty of uh, technology in this car as well. And to be honest, most of the fun stuff happens inside. So slightly wider, as you can tell, bigger wing and details like that. But it is cold, it is getting to be rainy and the fun happens in here. I wanna drive this car, which it's surprising to say for an electric car, 100% electric car. Now, oh yes, let me just quickly show you. We have these new bucket seats, which look really cool for the rear passengers as well. And you also have so much space back here. I mean, look at that. I'm not the biggest guy in the world, but I have loads of space. This is my driving position in front. I'm one meter 75. You have two uh, USB-C chargers back here. Uh, you can just put this down as well. You have two cup holders. You can pull the whole seats down, as we mentioned. Uh, you have some cool little details. Heated seats in the rear. Speakers. Now, there's actually slightly less boot space than in the standard car because of an extra speaker, which comes in handy later on, I'll show you. So, you have the nice little N logo, which is actually illuminated on the front of the seats, um, and then stitching and these bucket seats. Let's open the front. There we go. So when you hop in the front, there's a lot going on. There's a lot for us to see, guys. So close this up. First of all, you notice you have the big dual screen. So your dash and then your infotainment. So it's somewhat similar to what I, I have in the M3 Touring, I guess. Um, yeah, we'll go through all of this in a second. There's loads to do there. You have this really cool, actually, system for your cup holders around front where you can kind of hide them away if you want to. So I'll just take this out. So there we go. So there you go. Now you've just got a huge kind of storage area, but if you want cup holders, boom, you've got them right there. So loads of storage, a little more storage down in here. Um, you have another USB-C, you have a 12 volt right there. 
parking buttons and cameras, so you can see full 360 camera setup, which is really useful. Uh, induction charger, obviously Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, all those things. Another USB-C charger, another USB-C here. I mean, yeah, chargers all over the place. Nice, good size glove box as well with different compartments, quite practical. No sunroof. Um, I'm actually not sure if you can get one as an option. I don't believe so. I've no, I haven't seen one. There's loads of these are different press cars, loads of different press cars. None of them have sunroof. I doubt it. The car already weighs 2,275 kilos, so you don't want to add any more weight. You do have some physical buttons, which is nice to see. So physical volume uh, button right here, radio, your kind of your yeah track. They, they are touch as well if you want them to be. You then have all of these which are touch for your um, climate control. It's nice to have it separate. You don't need to go through the screen. It is touch, but yeah, I mean, the, it's actually quite nice to be able to have these so accessible. So I'm not going to complain about them being touch, <laughs> I promise. What's quite nice also about this center console is it's like a knee rest, for, especially when you're driving quite sportily. Um, you have your knee rest right there. Then we've got um, this steering wheel with loads going on. So you have all your traditional cruise control, phone, uh, voice activation, volume, all those buttons there. But then you have four interesting buttons. Let's start here. Drive modes, of which there are three. Eco, normal, and sport. You then also have NGB. Now this basically gives you 10 seconds of full power. Full power means 650 horsepower. When you're driving around normally, it's 609 horsepower. So that allows you to have a 0-60 time in 3.4 seconds. We'll be going and doing all the driving parts in a little bit. So kind of cool. So if you need to overtake someone or you just suddenly need more power, boom, you just press it right there. 10 seconds of bah, rip your head off. Electric power delivery so you get it all in one go. Now, then we have two buttons here. One is the Hyundai N setup, so your N button. And another one is to have the E shift. We'll look into that because it's very interesting. And also you can personalize uh, what you're getting here. So you can personalize these buttons, basically. They're like your shortcut buttons in a way. Now, I think we should probably get driving. Um, there is a lot going on on those screens that we have in front of us. You have now, if I go back, uh, we'll get back to this, N Active Sound. We'll, we'll get back to that in a second. But if you go home, you have the N Mode page where you can have all sorts of different things which they've added on. So it's all in French now, but it'll give you your percentage of acceleration towards break or braking. Um, you can have various different things. So like N Drift Optimizer. So that will do, as the name indicates, allow you to drift. This thing will pull huge drifts. Um, you have N race mode, N pedal, um, which is like, you know, charging and you can control through paddles, and N torque distribution. So that allows you to distribute the torque. It's a four wheel drive car and it's very smart in the way they all deliver the power to the front or the rear, depending on how you want it. Drag mode, track mode. Now, some interesting things, but we'll need to try those out when driving. Let me just get back to the menu because it does get all a little confusing. I don't know if I'm doing it in the right way. Where do I go? Home, home. No, that's not home. Setup. Is it here? Audio. And active sound. Okay, let's leave it there and we'll get back to that. Right. I'm going to pull out of here, this area, and then we'll join back up when, uh, when we're driving. So here we are then, driving. I'm in normal mode right now. And you can't hear too much, but we have different sounds. So let's choose evolution sound right here. Listen to this. It's going to sound like a spaceship, this car. <laughs> it's pretty weird. Super Sonic is even more so. It literally sounds like you're driving a spaceship. Listen to that. Now, those are cool gadgets, but the idea behind this car was for Hyundai to basically take on the impossible feat of making a fun, enjoyable, fully electric car. And they decided to have a laugh with it. They clearly showed they have a sense of humor 
and that they just want to have fun making these end product cars. And to be honest, it's such a breath of fresh air. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So these sounds, I'm going to put my temperature down a little bit. See right there, it's quite nice to just have that easily accessible, not have to go through any menus. Anyways, you still need to aim quite carefully because it's touchscreen. I'm getting distracted. Ignition. So this sound right here is actually quite cool all of a sudden. They've taken the sound of the i30N and basically dubbed it in through the speakers. So it sounds pretty, um, I don't know, it sounds just pretty, yeah, too fake or just like some sort of gizmo. But to be honest, so many of the modern cars that you'll drive now have fake sounds dubbed in through the speakers that it's not as surprising as you'd think. We'll see when we get out of this town. So the sound is one thing, but what they've then done, if we go into N mode, I believe, there we go. So N E shift basically allows you to have fake, a fake gearbox. So obviously electric car, no gearbox, right? but they've added in the feel of an eight speed double clutch gearbox. So what I mean is they haven't just added in the sound. So if I now accelerate, you get the sound of a car, of an actual car, right? So that's cool. They haven't just added in the sound of a gear shift, they've added in the whole feel of a gear shift. So first of all, you have these paddles. So left to go down, right to go up they have added in the feel so when you shift gears it cuts the power and you get that kind of jolt of a gear shift and also they've added in the feel of a traditional engine's torque delivery so if i'm like way up in sixth gear and i put my foot down the power is not getting there very quickly it's building up as i go through the rev range right whereas if i shift down all of a sudden, oh, the power is right there. They've added in the literal feel of a petrol powered engine and its power delivery into an electric platform. And honestly, it's pretty brilliant. So look, shifts down, it does pops and bangs, <laughs> and it takes off. 609 horsepower is a lot to have in this package, despite it weighing nearly 2.3 tons. But this, the fact that you can enjoy that sound, get those pops and bangs, I hope you can actually hear those, is so cool and adds so much character. I was so doubtful when I first heard what they were doing or at least trying to do with this car because the amount of times you hear, oh, we're making this platform more fun despite it being electric, and it's just literally such a dead experience and soulless this it feels like the car wants to have a laugh with you it feels basically like a bunch of engineers designed this in a room in a bunch of white suits and made it really nerdy and then they gave it to an eight-year-old and said right have fun with it add whatever you want to it and the eight-year-old has added an incredible sense of humor to this car and it is fun to drive and I did not think I'd be saying that about a fully electric powered somewhat city car anytime soon the fact that they've actually I think managed to pull it off is incredible I mean look at this thing it's so much fun genuinely I've been really enjoying I've been driving this around for about an hour now only in this mode I mean, the other modes, if you're going out to have a fun time, th there's just no point. You need to have this NE shift activated. And if you enjoy driving, it will give you the experience that you're looking for. I mean, look. <laughs> I mean, I know it's completely fake. And it actually, you can hear it from outside. So from 30 kph onwards, you can actually hear that sound. <laughs> Under 30 kph, it doesn't make any sound on the outside. It's only on the inside. And for some reason, I, I, I don't really mind that it's fake. I mean, it sounds better than a lot of petrol-powered modern cars that are coming out today. 
Um, and it has this kind of, you know, it's bright blue and orange and it makes noises. And, you know, when Hyundai are telling you about the car, you can tell they haven't, they barely even spoke about like range, which is 448 kilometers, by the way, which is actually quite impressive. Oh, I'm going to get lost. I'm going straight. Okay. Uh, which is quite impressive, but it's clearly not their priority. Uh, obviously, if you're driving it around in these modes, you're not going to be getting 448 kilometers. The priority was, let's make this fun. And if range is the only thing you're worried about, you're probably not buying the N, right? You'll be getting the standard car. Now, shall we, when we get into an 80 zone, try and slow down, there's no one behind, and let's activate this NGB button, which does, as far as I can tell, cut out the shifting part but does give you that extra power and you just absolutely take off because one of the benefits of electric power is obviously that power delivery so let's slow down a little bit let's get around this corner slow down a little bit and then give it the beans there we go nice little straight away right you ready this is what you do if you had your friends in the car NGB, off we go! Whoa! Okay, I can literally only accelerate for about two seconds before we're at the speed limit. But I mean, how easy and simple is that? And then flick a paddle to put it back into your manual mode, and off you go. You're having a good time again. You are directing, well, I was going to say the orchestra, it's not quite an orchestra, I shouldn't exaggerate, but you're at least directing some sort of sound and character, it feels like. <laughs> and the cool thing is you can bounce off the limiter and not hurt the engine. Ready? Listen to this. And the car is not going to accelerate any further. And you can do that and you're not damaging anything. It feels weird though, anyways. And then shift up, oh, and off you go again. <laughs> It's very well thought out. It's very well engineered. And it's the only thing... Well, no, it's not the only thing. It's, it's... I was going to say it's the only thing that interests me, but not at all. There are a lot of other interesting, fun parts about the car. But this just completely takes over the whole experience. And I love cars. I love petrol-powered cars. I think electric cars, for certain uses, as a Tesla goes by, certain uses can be brilliant if you're driving to work every day you drive in the city uh, you're not doing that long distances uh, then it can be really interesting but if it's to have a car that you want to be able to do that with but then still be able to have a good time when driving home or if ever you end up on a little road like this and be able to have that kind of dual usage I didn't think that was that was possible to be honest and previously I would have said that the Porsche Taycan was kind of the um, driver's electric car, let's call it. But to be honest, that just has a f the feel of a Porsche, but not the character of a Porsche. This actually feels like it has a personality, and it is brilliant. I really, really enjoyed it. And yes, you have loads of other gadgets, you have the drift mode, you have all sorts of different things, but to be honest, I'd leave it with ignition and active sound. I would leave it in sport, I would do the NE shift, and this would basically be how I drive this car everywhere when I was out of town. But if you want to, you can, you know, take it out of all these modes, put it into eco, and then you're in an electric car. You're in a decent size, practical electric car. Very cool. Very, honestly, I was very skeptical uh, at first. But I think this is a fantastic direction. I think Hyundai are proving that, you know, it's never, it's never going to be a manual Ferrari 360, right? But that's not the idea. But can it bring back some fun to these electric hatchback type cars? Honestly, this is very encouraging. And if I needed an electric or I wanted an electric or for taxes in your country, you needed an electric car, but I still wanted to have a good time. This is definitely, definitely the car I would go for. And for me, the leader in that very limited market is basically only this car for now. Hyundai, 
well done. <laughs> well done for bringing some humor into an otherwise very, very, thank you for bringing some humor, some fun into otherwise a very bland white rice world of electric daily drivers. This thing is awesome. I'm so glad I came out and gave it a go. I haven't spent enough time with it to really be able to experience, okay, you know, what's it properly like to live with, but I can tell you that it that it is probably pretty brilliant. I mean, even things from like the steering feel, whilst it's obviously not a hydraulic steering rack and like some of the steerings that we'd maybe used to seeing in the past, there's no way you're gonna get back there and they're not gonna try and get back to that kind of feel. For what it is, it feels really nice. The brake pedal's communicative, the e-pedal, the way that kind of works is communicative and predictable as well. It's a well-developed car and you can feel that through, you know, Hyundai N's now pretty developed racing status pedigree, they've learned a lot about the way a car should feel and they've just dialed that up into this. I really hope, I mean, on future platforms, you know, this in a really kind of small platform could be just so fun. It's really exciting, honestly. So yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. This car's come out of nowhere, certainly surprised me, potentially surprised you too. Hope you enjoyed it, subscribe for more, and I'll see you very soon. Cheers guys, bye bye.